Here's the brief news from the world over this week. It's official Pope Francis confirmed on Monday he is indeed coming to America next September for the World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia. Speaking at a Vatican-hosted conference on marriage and family, the papal announcement was met with applause. Philadelphia Archbishop Charles Chaput was on hand for the big moment. I applauded the loudest because we're very, very grateful for this opportunity. You know, the, uh, we're doing a lot of planning for the World Meeting of Families. There's great enthusiasm. The Pope will participate in the conference's closing events and will celebrate a mass on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Some two million people are expected for the mass. Stops in New York and here in D.C. are under consideration, according to church sources. We'll keep you posted. And a related programming note, Pope Francis travels to Turkey next Friday for three days of visits with state, Muslim, as well as Orthodox leaders on the occasion of the Feast of St. Andrew. EWTN will have complete coverage of the Pope's apostolic visit to Turkey. Go to EWTN.com for times and details. During the Interfaith Vatican Colloquium, entitled The Complementarity of Man and Woman in Marriage, the Holy Father stressed the need for strong families in society. The two sexes, each man and woman, he said, brings his or her distinctive contributions to marriage and to the formation of their children. And as such, children have a right to grow up in a family with a father and a mother, noting that marriage and the family are in crisis. Pope Francis lamented the culture of the temporary, in which more and more people are simply giving up on marriage. This revolution in manners and morals has often flown the flag of freedom, he said, but in fact it has brought spiritual and material devastation to countless human beings, especially the poorest and most vulnerable. More about the interfaith colloquium on marriage with one of its attendees, Pastor Rick Warren, later in the show. And it's been a busy week in Rome for Pope Francis. Speaking to Italian Catholic doctors on Saturday, the Pope reiterated the sacredness of all human life. He lamented abortion, euthanasia, and certain reproductive technologies. The Pope warned against society's dominant false compassion that believes in the promotion of abortion and that it's helpful for women, that euthanasia is an act of dignity, or that producing a child through technology is somehow a right. The Pope defended the Church's teaching on abortion on scientific grounds. Abortion, he said, is a scientific problem because there is human life there, and it is not lawful to take out a human life to solve a problem. End quote. And Cardinal Walter Casper, the leading proponent for admitting divorced and remarried Catholics to Holy Communion, is defending his position, but he says he's not attempting to change church doctrine. Inside the Vatican editor, Robert Moynihan reported that Casper and Cardinal Francesco Coco Palmiero, head of the Pontifical Council for Legislative Texts, discussed the matter during a round table this past week. Both men said, when the Synod reconvenes next year, there won't be any change in church doctrine, only an effort to change the application of the doctrine in specific cases. We'll keep you posted on these evolving explanations. Meanwhile, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI has waded into the debate on communion for divorced and remarried Catholics, sort of. According to reports, Cardinal Casper has been circulating a Ratzinger quote from a 1972 essay. In it, the future Pope opines that if, quote, a second marriage has proven to have taken on a moral and ethical dimension and is lived in the spirit of the faith, then communion after a penitential period seems, quote, to be nothing more than just and completely following the line of church tradition. That's almost spot on for the Casper position. However, in the latest publication of Benedict's writings, the paragraph that Cardinal Casper is often quoted has been redacted. Former Ratzinger pupil, Father Vincent Toomey, told the Irish Times that the omission was likely a significant attempt by the Pope Emeritus to prevent his earlier words, written in a different context, time, and role, from being misused. 
And Cardinal Raymond Burke is offering a solution to the hot button issues discussed during the Synod on the Family. Take them off the table. According to the Catholic Herald, Cardinal Burke has urged Pope Francis to remove from the agenda of next year's synod the consideration of communion for the divorced and remarried, cohabitation, as well as same-sex marriage. Instead, the former head of the Vatican's High Court recommends that the synod devote itself exclusively to promoting the Church's teaching on marriage. Speaking at a family conference in Limerick, Cardinal Burke further urged the faithful to write to Pope Francis, the Vatican, and Irish officials to make their views known on the matter. In Israel on Tuesday, two Palestinian cousins wielding meat cleavers, knives, and handguns stormed a Jerusalem synagogue, killing four rabbis and a policeman, including three Americans. The scene was grisly. Police shot and killed the two assailants. The synagogue attacked was the deadliest in Jerusalem since 2008 and came amid weeks of escalated violence linked to a disputed holy site sacred to Jews and Muslims. Pope Francis called the attacks unacceptable, urging Palestinians and Israelis to end the spiral of hatred and violence. Back here in D.C., in a primetime address, President Obama unveiled a plan to protect millions of undocumented immigrants from deportation via executive order. The reaction on Capitol Hill was immediate. Republicans claim the president is acting like a monarch without the consent of Congress. Democrats contend that President Reagan and both Bushes used executive orders to amend immigration laws. The U.S. Bishops' Conference signaled its support for the president's actions last week. And the Church of England has given final approval for the ordination of women bishops. Back in July, the General Synod of the Church of England approved the measure overwhelmingly. The church's first women bishop could be selected as soon as next month, with ordinations coming early next year. The landmark decision comes 20 years after the Church of England allowed for women priests. And the issue of female clergy was raised this week in a 60 Minutes interview with Boston Archbishop Cardinal Sean O'Malley. Nora O'Donnell pressed the Cardinal about the exclusion of women from church clergy. Here was the Cardinal's response. If I were founding a church, you know, I'd love to have women priests. But Christ founded it and what he has given us is, is something different. On a related question about the Vatican's so-called crackdown on the leadership conference of women religious, Cardinal O'Malley bluntly called it a disaster. And finally, on Tuesday in Chicago, retiring Cardinal Archbishop Francis George relinquished the bishop's staff to Blaise Supich, formerly of Spokane. In his homily, Archbishop Supich gave a glimpse of his agenda and vision for the archdiocese. He apologized for past transgressions and called Chicago's faithful to action. So we as a church should not fear leaving the security of familiar shores, the peacefulness of the mountaintop of our self-assuredness, but rather walk into the mess. During his installation homily on Monday, Archbishop Supich previewed his priorities, immigration reform, fighting gang and gun violence, and the poor. He added that he intends to tone down harsh rhetoric that often incites fears rather than inspires hope. Cardinal George, who was battling cancer, had been the spiritual leader of more than two million Catholics in Chicago since 1997. He received an extended standing ovation at the end of Tuesday's Mass.